Hello, I'm Karen from TheNeedleFelter.com. Today we're going to make a hummingbird. If you'd like to make your own hummingbird, I created a pattern. Just download the PDF file. It's linked in the description below. For the hummingbird armature, you'll need one 5 to 6 inch long 22 gauge cloth wrapped wire and two 4 inch long 32 gauge cloth wrapped wires. The first thing I did with the wires was to put a little glue on the tips to stop them from unraveling. To make the hummingbird beak, we'll use the 5 inch 22 gauge cloth wrapped wire. We're going to wrap this very thin. To give you an idea of how thin, here's a finished beak next to a bare wire. We really want just a very small amount of wool on the wire. You're going to use probably about an inch and a quarter to inch and a half for the actual beak, but I always wrap a little bit extra. So first I'm going to tear off a really thin strip of my merino black top. And I'm going to start by putting just a tiny bit of um, white glue. You want to keep the wool as flat as you can. And when you get to the tip, wrap it and then turn and come right back down. And make sure that you've got it long enough. Um, looks pretty good. And another thing you can do is kind of roll it in your hand a little bit. There's really no point in touching this with the needle. That can also help you get a little point on the tip. And now what I'm going to do to secure it, since we can't really felt it, is I coat it with a mixture of uh, white glue and water. And I do about a 50-50 mix. I just have it in a little container like this. And then grab an old paintbrush. And I'm just going to very lightly brush that mixture over the wool. Try to apply it in the same direction as you last wrapped the wool. So in this case, I wrapped around this way going back. So that's the way I'm going to apply the glue. You don't need a lot. If it looks a little wooly, don't worry about those stray fibers. Once it's dry, you can just trim those right off. The length of the hummingbird's beak can vary. We're going to make the ruby throated, so I'll make it about the length that I have it in the picture. So I'll just hold the beak up and I'm going to bend the wire about where the eye is. My wire is a little long. I'm just going to cut mine right there. Now we're ready for core wool. And what I want it to look like is something like this. So do you want to keep the neck thin and the tip of the tail thin? So just some things to keep in mind as you're wrapping the bird. So I'm going to start. Start where the bird's eye would be. And I want to wrap this pretty tight. And as I get down to the tip of the tail, I want to try to start encouraging it into that point. So I'm going to keep my wool kind of straight, flat like a ribbon. Sorry, not straight, but flat like a ribbon. Wrap down and then back up again to start encouraging the wool into a point there.
And then I'm using my coarse needle to felt it in place. And keep turning your bird as you're felting it. So I need some more wool on the back. I need some more on the chest. So I'm going to make some little shapes. Also going to add some core wool to the back of the head to round out the head. This is almost like making a little shower cap for the bird. So we'll put that shape. Make sure that your chest is going forward and felt that onto the back of the head. I think I'm going to use my medium needle just to get that tacked on. So now I'm starting to get a nice rounded head shape with the beak in the middle, keeping the beak in the middle of it. Need more wool on the body, so I think I still need a little more in the chest. So just kind of watch that you're not getting it too far around the back. You can also sort of just felt the body a little bit between your hands to get a good idea of the shape. looking pretty good. I'm just going to add a little bit more on the chest. So I'm going to just kind of give them a final smoothing. Helps, helps him get that cone shape. And I think we're ready for top coat. We've got a nice body, nice broad chest, little cone shape for the tail, and a nice round head. Off camera, I went over the entire bird with a 38 twist needle. I spent about 15 minutes just firming it up. I also added a tiny bit of core wool just to the front of the neck. It looked a little bit too concave there, so I added a piece of core wool that just went from about here to here and maybe about this far down just to add a little padding there. And now we're ready to add the eyes. So I'm going to use five millimeter glass eyes. And what I want to do first is figure out where I want them to go. These are florist pins that I got I think at Hobby Lobby. I like these because they're shorter. They're still going to be too long, I'm gonna go right through this head, but they help you just sort of figure out about where you need to position the eye. Let me see. 
So I line it up there and I sort of move it down. I can see it's lined up pretty well. And then they also try to line it up. So I try to line it up sort of vertically and then also horizontally. So then I want to line up a second one. I'm try Actually, what I'm going to try to do is angle these back a little bit and see if I can get them about even. I think that looks that looks good. And now what I'll do is mark that. Um, I'm gonna use this purple. This is an erasable marker. And then what I like to do is also mark that with an all. I'm going to use my awl and poke a hole, kind of try to move that pin around so I can see where it was and poke a hole in there. And these, even the wires on these eyes, I've already trimmed them, but they, I can see they're going to be too long. So I need to cut them down too quite a bit. So now they're nice and short. So I'm going to use some E6000 glue, just put a little bit kind of on the stock of the eye. Now I can't, there we go, about that much is enough. And go ahead and glue that in, tap that one in, and then we'll go ahead and glue the other side. Let me get a little bit of glue on that tip and go ahead and put that in. Okay, I made one change. I updated the pattern the wings in my original pattern were too big so I made them a bit smaller and slightly changed the position this will be the new downloadable pattern so we left off with adding the birds eyes so they've dried now we're ready to start adding the top coat so the colors we'll be using for the bird are some white DHG super fine carded merino I have some sage Maori DHG carded wool, Caparina DHG super fine carded wool, moss green carded merino, a tiny bit of forest green carded merino, a little bit of black super fine DHG carded merino, and then I mixed a little bit of red and orange DHG carded merino. I'll be using a Dritz air and water soluble marker to draw in the pattern for the ruby throated hummingbird. So we'll start by just, I like to kind of draw a midline. Just helps me keep it, or keep the pattern symmetrical. So this bird has a little bit of black around the eye, so I'm gonna kind of sketch that in. And I'm aware, and I'm following this pattern. And I'm also looking at reference images of real ruby-throated hummingbirds as I'm doing this. So the black on the hummingbirds, it kind it goes kind of under their eye and then just past it. And it's got a little bit of a fan shape. It goes right up to the beak. So I'm going to try to draw that on both sides. 
All right, that looks good. Then they have their ruby throat. And you can kind of hold your bird up if you want to see about where that starts. So I can see it starts about there. Bring it up. On both sides. Then they have sort of a white chest. So if I use my pattern again. And that has a pretty steep slope on it. I'll put that about there. And again, it just has a tiny bit that attaches by the edge of that ruby area. Then they have a light green section that goes down to just above the feet. So I'm going to mark that about right there. And that comes about halfway down the body. So if you just draw kind of a halfway line on each side. And then just kind of curve that in. Like I said, it varies, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can also adjust it once you're putting, filling it in with wool. And then uh, this was just a dividing line between the base green, which this will be my base green, and then a lighter green and a little bit of sage. So I can go ahead and mark that too. That's a little bit, kind of starts about halfway, but then um, leans a little forward. So I'll go ahead and put that in on each side. Let's see how that looks. I think it comes about like that. All right, so now that we've got those areas sort of marked, it's almost, I think of it almost like color blocking. I'm going to go ahead and felt in the base color for each section. Sometimes the marker seems to start disappearing just from the heat of my fingers handling the wool. If I see that happening, I just redraw them. I've added all the colors except for adding a little bit of this sage that I plan to add to the very front of the bird's body and the white down here. The reason I didn't add the white here is because this section of the bird is so thin that as I'm adding more green, it's pretty likely that I'll poke through and there'll be green showing through on this side. So I'll wait and add the white here last. 
But what I'm going to do next is just kind of go back over the whole bird, add a little bit more so that it doesn't look so patchy. So I'm gonna add a little bit more wool to each area and then also add in the sage and the white uh, to the base of the tail. I marked out where the dark green wool will go for the tail. I still haven't put any white in here and I did add just a little bit of this sage Maori wool over the, the body of the hummingbird. I'm gonna add a little, the, my final step will be to add the white with a little bit of the sage coming down into the um, area where the feet will be. But let's go ahead and we're gonna make just this tiny tip of a tail. So I'm going to do that with my dark green wool. I want to make a tiny little shape that can extend just a little bit over the tip of the body. Now I'm going to kind of just rub it in my fingers to try to Felt it a little bit more, just rub it in the palm of my hand. Just helps kind of apply a little pressure to the wool. Felt it a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to set that aside because what I'm going to do is go ahead and add that white in and then we'll attach the tail last. They do tend to have a little bit of beige or color in this white area on the 
base. So I, that's where I'm going to add a little bit of this sage down in there to kind of simulate that little bit of color that they'll have. That might be too much. I really just want a hint of that color. Kind of coming down here. Okay, that looks good. And I will go over the whole bird with a fine needle once I get all the color on. So I'm not too worried about needle marks at this point. Okay, so now we can attach that and I wanna have it overhang the edge of the body just a little bit. So attach it about right there. I wanna try to get it in the center. And then I just lightly tack it first to make sure I've got it where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and tack right up into it so I can really get it tacked onto that tip of the body. I'm trying not to get into the white. I'm trying to stay on the green side of the body and felt it really into the core wall. All right, now I'm going to spread it out just a little bit because it's a little longer. I only really want the green to come down about here. That'll also help attach it too. Just sort of split that a little bit and felt it up each side. I've completely covered my bird and gone back in and just refined the shapes a little bit. So now I'm ready to make the wings. I started by tracing the wing pattern onto a piece of cardstock and cut it out. I use this to help me shape the wing as I'm making kind of a thin felted sheet. You need your two wing wires. Just slightly bend the wire about one inch from the glued end. So it fits on your wing pattern about like that. And for reference, I already felted one wing. So this is what we're making. You can see it's about, about the same size as the pattern. I'm using three colors for this wing. This is a kind of a beige color called Cafe Au Lait. I'm using some merino top from DHG called Beaver. I just cut it up and made my own little mini bat and then I have a little bit of acacia. This is DHG Superfine Merino Carded Wool. So what you want to do to start is just kind of, this is why I like having the pattern cut out, you want to make a felted sheet about the same shape as your wing and don't forget to put the wire in. <laughs> that's, the, that's the part I always kind of forget until the last minute. And I'm going to use a felted, a little piece of scrap felt on this, I think it helps lift that felted sheet off that you're making. Lay some of this bat out in roughly the shape of the wing. Try to get it kind of even in thickness. 
You don't want it too thick in the middle. But I just want to kind of get roughly that shape. And I'm going to start just felting that down with a core, coarse needle. Just to start making a small felted sheet. I think the trick to this is to keep lifting it up, pulling it off so that you don't see right there, it's already sticking to the felt a little bit. And flip it over and just keep keep going this way, trying to keep, make sure you're keeping your piece long enough. I know it's a little thinner on this side, so I'm gonna just keep measuring it a little bit to make sure I've got enough wool. And I'm just going to keep felting that and flipping it a few more times, and then I'll add the wire. So I want to place the wire right about there. Doesn't matter if it's not exact. You'll have a um, chance to move it around a little bit. And I'm going to start kind of by just folding some of this top over. Pull that off and let's start refining the shape. Now I want the wire, the tip of the wire, to be at least a um, good quarter inch or more from the end tip of the wing. So if my wing is going to fit on the pattern about here, then I can start shaping the wing using this pattern. Now it's getting to about the shape that I want, but it still feels a little thin compared to this first one. So I'm going to add a little bit more wool and I'm gonna start adding it in the colors that I want. So I'm gonna add some of the dark along the top so that it doesn't get overly thick. And then I'll add a little bit of the sort of base color to the lower part. The lightest color I just want thin wisps of, so I'm not going to use that as I'm creating the thickness. But I can start adding the dark, darker color to help thicken it up. And just for reference, I'm just adding the dark along this top, then a little bit over the tip on both sides.
So it's just about the size I want. I'm going to do one more pass along the bottom. What I need to do is just add a little bit of this lighter color. So just some really thin layers of this on either side of the wing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just really almost just little wisps of color. You can take your pattern and if you just wanna get this light area, you can cut that out. That's one nice thing with cardstock. So I just made another copy of it cut that out and then you can lay that over where you just want that light area. So I'm, I've am i got it about there. It just helps you place things. So I think I'll do that. Like I said, I don't want it too thick. I'm going to keep this real thin and I'm going to put it on with a fine needle. It doesn't matter if it goes through because we're going to do the same thing to the other side in this case. And then you can just see if you need, need any more. This looks like I added a little bit more there, so we'll try to, especially right in here, it's a little bit lighter so I'll add a little more there to try and try and make them look similar. I'm gonna put just a little more on that end because it feels a little light and maybe a little more right there. And then I think that'll be pretty even on this side and then try to match the other side. So now we have, we have two wings. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of green to each, to the base of each of these wings. If you look at hummingbirds, they do have just a little bit of green that comes up there. And then I'm going to add just a little bit on the other side, too. And then I'm just going to trim around these a little bit. Just trim off that. Any strays there. And these are ready to attach. I'm going to grab my little pins just to figure out the placement of the wings so I get them even. even. So I think about there. So since we want to get them the same on both sides, it's easier to do that right now. Go ahead and try to position the other side. Once you have your pins where you want them, then we're just going to use an awl to poke a hole. And I will need to cut the wire shorter, so let me grab, I'm going to grab my wire cutters. So probably want to cut them 
about half an inch or so. And then I'm just gonna make sure they're straight because it's hard to get them in if they aren't straight. And make sure you have the right ones on each side if you have kind of a front and a back. So I know I wanna put this one on this side. So I'll just lay them like that. And I think I'll do this side first. So I need my glue, just like with the eyes. I'm gonna use some E6000 glue for these. I wanna create a pretty big hole. And before you glue it, just go ahead and test the position. So I'm gonna pull it out very carefully so I don't lose the hole and I'm gonna reshape the hole one more time just to make sure I have a nice big hole for that to go in. And then put some glue, put a deep, good amount of glue on it. Maybe even a little more, because I really want that to stay in. And then just press it in place. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I like to set the set them aside to dry for a little bit. I'm just gonna prop them up a little bit so he can not move those wings around too much. All right, so my wings are dry and I'm going to add just a little bit of green at the base just to help them blend into the body. And you can see on this one, I had a little, little bit of glue seepage. So just adding a little bit of green wool there. We'll cover that right up. And you can see the difference that makes. So there's the side with it blended versus the side without it. It just makes it look a little more finished. I might add a little bit to the top. It doesn't need much on the top. And then I'll do position this one about the same way. So you want to look at them straight on and I can see I really um, would like to add some green there. I'm going to go over it with a, a fine needle. But before we do that, I want to make some little feet and attach the hanging cord. Now you don't have to do this, but I like to add some just little nubs for feet. So I'm gonna do that very similar to the way that I made the little tip of the tail. Trim out those little tips and we'll go ahead and felt those in. So I want this to go in about here. About right in the center. So what I'm gonna do is kind of make sure I've got about the center line. Looks pretty good. Make a little hole there. And I'm gonna felt them in first with a coarse needle. All right, 
feet. And there you've got the little feet. So before I go over the whole piece with a fine needle, I want to put the hanger in. So I'm using some of this DMC gold thread. And that's going to be about where I want my knot. So I can pull it through. Go ahead and knot that. I'm going to separate the wool a little bit because I don't want to have to add more if I don't need to. I just want to have enough loose so that I can kind of pull that knot in, trim it off, and then cover it with some of the wool. So I'll go ahead and trim that. And then pull it into the hole that I made. Cinch it up a little bit. And then I can just take my needle, pull that wool back over, and felt it. You don't want, try not to felt into the knot because you might cut it with your needle. These needles are very sharp, so they can actually slice through the thread. So just be careful, you want to sort of felt around it at an angle. You're just really trying to cover up that divot. And your hummingbird is done. I'm going to go over mine one more time with a fine needle, just over the whole thing, just to touch up any places that got messed up as I was handling him. Once I do that, he's ready to hang. This is where we started, and this is where we ended up. I'm really pleased with this little guy. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.